I want to go through crop planning because if there's one area of our farm that I think you know is, is really critical to our success, it's crop planning. And crop planning, what it is, it's a four step process that we do every year in the winter. And the first thing that we do is that we set our financial objectives. Once we have that established, we determine our production according to how much money we want to make. Then we get the production and then we figure out how to translate this information into a guideline, which is a crop planning calendar that tells us what to do when. And the last step is making a plan to make sure that we know where it's going to go in the garden. So these are the four steps. And you know, we could have a full day workshop about crop planning. But today, what I want to convey as a message to you guys is just the lo logical steps and the importance of this process of, of doing the crop planning. Okay? So the first step, determining financial objectives. Before you ask for, you know, before you inquire about a job, you want to know how much it pays. And it's the same for your season, you know? If you want to start a season, you want to make sure that you'll know that you won't make it. Whatever. And what's great about CSA is that it, it, it allowed us to understand production in terms of boxes, weekly shares. And so on our farm, for example, we count the uh, market clients just the same as our CSA clients. And we'll determine that we have 200 weekly shares. And that each share, each box, they'll be of $25 worth of value of different vegetables and we're going to be distributing for 22 weeks which is what our, our growing season back home really allows us okay and so by doing that we can easily calculate our net our gross and our net because we know our margins and these are target margins so from there we're like, okay, $50,000. That's going to be our net. $25,000 each. Are we okay with that? Does that work? Can we make a budget? Can we, can we run our expenses that way? Yes, no. Do I need to think about having a job next winter? Yes, no. Can I play with these to change this? Uh, are you taking a sabbatical? Yes, okay, well, then we'll, whatever. We, we can play with all of that, but at least we know ahead of time. And that part is important because it's, it's, that's, that's going to be your target afterward. And then, before you go on and determine all of this, you know, you can, you can ask yourself a rightful question. Am I growing everything? Am I growing like 58 crops? Or am I in my third season? or in my second season I'm doing 15 crops and I'm buying certain other crops for experienced growers to add to my offer you need to ask yourself these questions because it might be it, you know each crop is a learning curve and before you master all of them it can take quite a few years better off perhaps to start with less diversity and to every year add new but anyway Regardless of what you, you, you decide, it's a good idea to know which ones are the more profitable. So we've measured on our farm since, again, we had that limited amount of space, how much money we make per bed. And we calculated for space and time. So we have, you don't, guys don't see here, but we've calculated for bed the revenue per bed. Let's say a, let, a, a bed of lettuces gives us $500. And a bed of broccoli also gives us $500. But we also wanted to know the amount of days that the crop will occupy the space on the bed. Because lettuces, 45 days from transplant to harvest, or 30 days. Broccolis, from transplant to harvest, 60 days. Meaning that I can do two times the lettuce in one bed of broccoli. So for me, lettuces are worth 
twice as much as broccoli because I can do successions. So we've measured this, and all of this is in, in the book. So these are charts that could be useful for you guys. Once we knew that, what we did is that we've assembled the basket for 22 weeks. So we predetermined in the winter how each week share is going to be filled up with. And so share one, which will, our target is 16th of June, first delivery. We decided there will be spinach, radishes, cucumbers, summer squash, kohlrabi, whatever. And then we put the price and that we came away at a total, which was of $26. That's going to be our first share. Share number two, a week later, different produce. Share number three, 22 shares that way. And that's how we determine what we're going, going to grow. So once you know this, what you're growing, you need to answer two fundamental questions. How much I need to grow of this? And when do I need to plant it? These are the two hardest questions with regards to growing crops, divert, you know, a mixed vegetable operation. What to grow and, and when to start everything so that you're not, you don't have everything at once and then when you go to market or whatever, you have what you need. And again, the beds become a useful unit of measure. So we want to know, if I want radishes for the 16th of June and I want 200 bunches because that's my goal, how many beds do I need to plant? And then I need to answer the question, well, when do I need to, to start them to have them when I want them? So these are the two questions. And in the book, we have charts like these that can really help you out. Because we've measured the yields of all of the vegetables per square foot of beds, per hundred square foot of beds. And so you'll, we know that in a, in a bed of lettuce, there's 250 lettuce heads. We know that, you know, onions, you can get around 400 pounds. So with these charts, we can calculate the amount of beds that we need for our target of 200 per week. That helps a lot. Again, these charts. With the help of these charts, then you answer this, these questions of, if I want radishes for the 16th of June, when do I need to start them? Well, radishes are 30 days. You looked it up in the chart, and then so you need to seed them the 15th of May. How many beds? You know, you've looked in the chart, and it's 300 bunches per bed. So you need at least one bed. And you go around for all of the crops that you predetermined would be your offer for every week and get these numbers. And with these numbers, you go out and you put them together. So at the end of the year, once I've done my 22 you know, uh, CSA shares, I know that I have all these radishes date with all these numbers of beds. So I regroup all of my vegetables together and then I do my seed order. So I know my needs for seed for the whole season. Okay, so that's important, that helps. But it's with this information that I can really go and plug everything in a calendar and then what happens is that on a weekly glance, I know in a given week everything that needs to be transplanted, everything that needs direct seeded, everything that needs to be started in the greenhouse. And I can organize my week according to that. If it's sunny outside, you know, in the start of the week, I'll do all my direct seeding and I'll know that my transplants I'll do later on. And that helps us organize our week to make sure that we never forget anything and that we don't think about what we're doing. We're just following a plan. So we're taking the, the decision-making process out of the field heat because we're busy in the summer and we're taking it to the hot stove in the winter, drinking tea and just kind of like listening to good tunes because we have the time to do this. And, you know, I can't tell you enough how this is a big part 
of our success on the farm. If it wasn't for that, man, it's a mess. You, you over-transplant, you, you, you don't have enough of this, you have too much of that, you're, you're not organizing your time adequately because you don't really know what's going to happen next. You're always kind of thinking about everything, you're stressed, there's a lot of things happening. Crop planning, crop planning, super duper important. If some of these old school kind of freestyle farmers tell you, ah, oh, I just have everything in my head, good for you. But you know what? You should crop plan. All right, so the last step is that once you get all these dates, you need to put them in your crop, in your map, of, of your garden map. And so one bed, this is one bed for the season, okay? So this is a field block, so there's 16 beds in my field blocks. And so I'm planting beets. These are the dates that I predetermined. So I'm putting them the, 16th, the 6th of June. They're direct seeded. And I know all of my vegetables on the farm, because we've calculated this over many years, how long they'll occupy the space till we're done with that crop. And for each crop, it's different. You know, lettuces, it's pretty easy. It's like 30 days, and then you chop them up, and they're done. But you know, beans, you'll harvest for two weeks and then you'll change, we'll change it to another seedlings. And so at the end of my book, there's, for all of our crops, how we go about them for harvesting and for how long and forever. And this information is useful for you guys because you need to know this ahead of time. You need to know that beans will be, you know, three weeks harvest after growing for like 40 days in the ground because you need to know when the bed will be available ahead of time because you want to plan that what's coming up next there will be a timely succession and that's how we really really make the successions happen on the farm we know where everything's going to go when is it going to be done with by what is it going to be replaced and when do we need to make these starts inside our greenhouse and that's how we're really efficient with regards to the usage of space and time in the market garden. Crop planning. Okay? Any question? Come on. <laughs> yes? What do you do with some of your crop debris? Um, like broccoli, for example. Do you, do you okay. rip them out? Or? That's a great question. And so that's definitely an experienced grower that is asking me this. The crop calendar is also really important in that way. Because let's say I have planned for four beds of carrots to be seeded on the 16th. I write that down. I know that if I want to do a stale seed bed and do a pre-emergence, I need to prepare my seed beds two weeks ahead of time. I mark it in my calendar. Okay? And everything, you know, I know that rust flies in August, they're a problem. I mark it in my calendar. Cover carrots with net. All of the managing thing that I can think about ahead of time, I put in my calendar. Same thing with tarps. And that happens when I put everything in the ground on map. And I'm like, okay, so beets will remove, there's nothing there because the tops, but perhaps, you know, arugula. Then I need to plan two weeks for the tarp. And if I forget, or if I mismatch, or if I don't make it out work, then I'll be screwed in the summer. Then I'll need to what? To rotor till? The, I don't know what I'll, you know, or to change my plans. But if I haven't thought, if I didn't think about that, then I'm screwed. Like I left a month, you know, July 5th and July 5th. Oh, I might, I might have a problem there. I might have a problem. This is gonna, this is gonna happen. This, I'll, be, I'll have a problem there. And then I'm gonna be like, oh man. So that's why we need to take notes of everything that went wrong. And it's that, that same time here, we put together the crops that will be covered by a net there side by side. Because what's the point of putting a net, you know, to cover these two and then another net to cover these two when I could just cover one, the four of them together with one net. So I can, I can play with all of this. I know that my sprinkler lines, they water four beds. So everything that's direct seeded that I need to water three or four times a day, I'll put together 
the four of them together. So all of this thinking, which really makes a difference in the summer, because again, if you're, you know, if you're putting nets here and putting nets here, and just taking a lot of time, all of this decision-making process is, is brought back to a plan that is uh, well thought about. If you drink tea, not wine, okay? That's important. <laughs>